This gaming mouse is a glorious failure. The Model O Pro is one of the most controversial gaming mice launched in 2022. And in my opinion, it's a ball of wasted potential. Because really, on the surface, it's not actually all that bad of a gaming mouse. But there were so many questionable decisions regarding its launch and regarding the whole marketing of this gaming mouse that makes me go, what was glorious thinking? Let's start with the mouse itself though. And on the surface, it's actually pretty decent value. For the price it was being listed at, about 70 to 80 US dollars, including shipping, you got a pretty decent gaming mouse. It's pretty light at 55 grams, has a shape that is like a narrower Razer Viper, making it a pretty decent alternative to the Razer Viper, and it has a decent sensor, a Pixar 3370. The clicks are alright, though nothing particularly amazing, and they do feel a bit slow and a bit stiff. The scroll wheel is also alright as well, as are the thumb buttons and the mice feet. Overall, it's a nice upgrade on the Model O wireless. So why is it such a colossal failure? And why does the mouse community seem to completely dislike this gaming mouse, except for a select few that bought it anyway. Well, the first issue has to be with the launch. This mouse was not a general sale, general release gaming mouse. It was something that was placed on pre-order. And for many people in the mouse community, it just didn't carry anything that justified the hassle, the trouble, the risk, and the weight that is associated with getting a product on pre-order. It is a upgrade on the Model O wireless, but for just 55 grams, the same sensor, and a fresh coat of paint, it just wasn't worth all the trouble and problems a pre-order tends to bring. And most people were right. Because not only did this pre-order take months to arrive, it was late by a good few weeks on top of that. And a lot of people had to wait all the way to October, a good month after its promised arrival date, for them to receive their Model O Pro. And on top of being late, for many people, their Model O Pro arrived with problems. QC issues, broken bits, and rattly noises when they shake their mice. Now, Glorious addressed this in a Reddit post, and thankfully it seems like they have good enough service to basically replace this gaming mouse for everyone that had a problematic unit. But what I thought was hilarious about their defense was, you're not supposed to violently shake your gaming mouse because you're not supposed to do that with electronics. I mean, I'm quoting loosely here, but what they're basically saying is that I'm not supposed to flick my gaming mouse really quickly. Because when you're flicking your gaming mouse really quickly, you're basically violently shaking it, which is one of the worst PR defenses I've ever heard. But really, that wasn't the worst part about the Model O Pro's launch. If it was just QC and lateness, I think the mouse community won't be so annoyed and full of disdain for the Model O Pro. They're actually used to having late products with poor QC. There's a reason why Final Mouse and GWoos still do so well. No, but the worst part of this gaming mouse launch was really the fact that they hid the existence of the Series 1 Pro from public knowledge until after the pre-order of the Model O Pro was done, seemingly to maybe cash in more on the Model O Pro than the Series 1 Pro. Which in my opinion makes no sense to me because this move did nothing to help them with profits but did everything to pick piss off the core audience that made them successful in the first place. Let me explain. So basically, the Model O Pro was on a limited time two-week pre-order. Once that pre-order period was up, they immediately announced a different, smaller, and similarly specced gaming mouse called the Series 1 Pro. It's a gaming mouse that is not objectively better than the Model O Pro, but for many users, especially those with smaller hands and more aggressive claw or fingertip grips, the Series 1 Pro provides a shape that is unique, more compact, and possibly a better fit that is subjectively better for a lot of users. Because they hit the existence of the Series 1 Pro and the fact that it was coming up as the next pre-order, there were a lot of people who bought the Model O Pro who could have easily been better served with a Series 1 Pro instead which results in them having one of two choices. One, to cancel the order and deal with all the headaches that comes with cancelling refund your Model O Pro order and then reordering a Series 1 Pro. Or number two, stick with the Model O Pro and accept the fact that you've got a more inferior gaming mouse that is a subjectively worse fit for you than it could have been because you weren't given the option to choose between two glorious products because they hit the existence of the Series 1 Pro from the world. I actually have no idea why Glorious did this because I think it's a stupid move that punished people for supporting Glorious in this group buy. It genuinely just punished people for being okay with the pre-order, for taking a risk with Glorious. Because that trust that was placed in them with that pre-order, that trust that was placed in them when they ordered because they thought this was Glorious' best gaming mouse yet, was completely shattered by the fact that it was obviously 
a lie. And it doesn't make sense to me because the Series 1 Pro wasn't actually going to cannibalize sales for the Model O Pro. The Series 1 Pro has a drastically different shape and yet basically the same specs. Sure, it's 5 grams lighter, but it's also a smaller mouse with a more aggressive shape and it really was a different animal to the Model O Pro. So by offering both at the same time or giving people knowledge about both of the mice at the same time, people would be able to make better purchase decisions. And it was not like people were going to buy two gaming mice because they had staggered the release and hit the existence of the Series 1 Pro anyway. All it did was piss off the people who moved quickly and was willing to be enthusiastic about supporting Glorious. And of course, that is going to piss off your audience. And that's why this mouse ended up being very, very hated on in the gaming mouse community. Of course, there's still people that like it because fundamentally, it's not a bad mouse. But because it's still not a bad mouse, it really hurts me to say how badly it's performed and how badly it's been received because this mouse is a product with a lot of potential. If Glorious came out with this mouse on general sale with its beautiful, fancy, customizable colors and the fact that it was a good budget alternative to the Razer Viper, it probably would have sold in the bucket loads. But instead, Glorious decided to pull a bunch of weird stunts with a bunch of weird decisions that, in my opinion, as a reviewer from the outside looking in, makes no sense at all in terms of their PR and in terms of their sales. I would have easily recommended this as a great cheap alternative to the Razer Viper V2 Pro since it weighs the same as the Viper V2 Pro with a very similar shape but a substantially lower price. So then the Glorious Forge Model O Pro. It's like that gifted kid who was a absolute child prodigy that had the potential of the roof in the sky but ended up homeless. What is Glorious doing and what exactly is their leadership thinking? I don't know but all I know is thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Bye. That was a good one. Three souls. One enemy one remaining. One B, B main, B main. Okay!